Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 50, PZ Pro Progress. PZ Progress. <laughs> and I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. I don't know if you can see him, but the lovely Mr. McElban, the cat, is hanging out in front of the camera right now. So he may pop up, make it an ear here, a nose there, that type of thing. Um, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. And while I'm saying thank yous, I just want to make sure to say thank you for all the private messages and posts on the board this week. I don't know. Did somebody decide to show me love? Like, <laughs> well, yes, people did decide to show me love. I've just gotten so many positive and wonderful messages lately. And I do this because of you. I do this because it's fun to me and I really appreciate hearing that you also enjoy our time together. So thank you for so much for telling me. Um, yeah, and the usual, if you leave a star rating, it does help the other people find the podcast more easily over on iTunes. So uh, I think that's, that's what I have to say about that. Oh, I have one more thank you. I'm looking at it right now. I need to thank uh, Miss Manuela. London 1978 for sending me a wonderful little care package package thinking of me package she uh, sent this cute little kitten card this over here and then included this stitch marker no stitch count row counter row counter I've never used a row counter before um, it's not something I've ever had but I can see why it would be handy so far I haven't this is the first time I've gotten to hold it and click it because Roland has just been crazy for this, running around the house doing that all the time. And she included a skein of wool butt, Bia is the color, and let's see, so she's, this is German yarn I'm presuming because it's where she lives, it's his main turkey. Uh, so that's a 50 viscose, 25 cotton, 25 acrylic, I'm thinking it wants to be some sort of drapey, drapey, drapey shawl, but because of the Hot, like none of those things are really uh, blockable so I'm not sure what this is going to be but it feels so nice and it's dense you know like I could see it as a really nice narrow scarf to wear in the summertime so I have to think about it but I love this color the teals and the grays mixed together I think it's absolutely stunning so thank you very much Manuel. Um, yeah and that's what I have to say to you. <laughs> no, I do also want to just acknowledge the fact that I don't really like to record a podcast without having um, some sort of FO, some major progress to share with you guys so that I feel like, you know, it's worth your time checking it out. I mean, who wants to watch a podcast where they say, well, I knit five rows on this and that's it. I mean, yeah, sure, you love the personality and you want to see the people, but... Personally, I like to see progress and get inspired by it and get motivated to knit on my own projects. So, up front, I'm kind of disappointed in myself this week. <laughs> I had a few, few cause little goals, you know, you want to show things off, and I really didn't achieve any of them. Yeah. But I do have some PZ progress, so that does make me happy. So let's look at that first. Uh, I have been knitting. Let me grab my notes here. Um... The Peasy by Heidi Kermier. 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 I massacre that name every time. Um, and I think last time I showed it to you, I had a couple inches. So this is a top down raglan sweater. I think my image is just black and white, which is absolutely no fun for you guys, I know. I should really try and. I don't know why this isn't printed in color, actually. Because. Yeah. Okay, yes, enjoy. So, I had a couple inches. This is a top down raglan sweater that I may or may not find an image to share with you. Um, yay, jackpot! Jackpot, one of my favorite words. So, there you go. Uh, that's what it looks like. Thank you, Mac. Yes, highlight it with your ears. <laughs> um, so, you know, just a little lace detail here at the chest. I had thought to make it a Henley. Uh, it turns out I'm not going to make it a Henley, 
my math was crazy, my gauge was off. I don't know. I don't like to knit swatches, so I use the Garmin itself as a swatch, and I generally know that I'm going to be in the high 40s, right? So I cast on that size, and then I measure my gauge as I'm going along, and adjust my uh, adjust the size I knit to match the stitch count I need for my gauge. That's how I have had success knitting sweaters. So this guy took a bit of adjusting, but you will see. I'm more, so I was less than halfway through this section, so I was about there. Since the last time we talked, I finished that, I'm sorry, yes, to hurt my chest, I'm using it as a display cabinet. Um, I finished through the lace, the dryer is done, <laughs> broke off for the sleeves, and have done probably an inch past that. So, yay, very exciting. I am using... Belly Yarn Superwash DK in the rose colorway. Um, I have, I think, nine skeins of this, and I'm just about done with my second skein. So it's a very decent put up for a per skein. I'm using US size 6 4.0 millimeter, ne millimeter needles. And I'm now, since it's just back and forth stocking at body, I'm to the point, this is one of my favorite points in knitting where you have to go. Here's my prescription for you if you want to knit like this. Go and find an intense action movie. It doesn't have to have a lot of plot. The last one I found like this was Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise. Well, it was Tom Cruise. Anyways, um, find something that is just going to mesmerize you. This, this, you can't look at your knitting, right? And so I will get in this zone focused on the movie and my needles but I swear I knit faster. I should time myself how many stitches per inch, I, uh, stitches per minute I am knitting, because if once I get in that zone with the action movie and I'm so focused, Argo was another good one. Um, I, I will knit four inches on this or something crazy. Like I'll just bust out that stocking out like there's no nothing. There's that's all there is in this world is that movie and the stocking out, and I'm not even thinking about the stocking out. So that's what I'm up to. Also, car rides are good for this, but it can get tedious. But I never notice the monotony of the stockinette when I'm watching an action movie. So there you go. Get the action movie. Um, what did my dad tell me to watch? He's big on action movies. And Steve, my husband, is he movies are a waste of his time and his mind. <laughs> so usually I end up watching the action movies by myself. Like we just watched Lincoln last week. He likes those kind of movies. Not that there's not anything wrong with those kind of movies. They just paired with stockinette knitting. I end up drifting off, which is exactly what I did, so I didn't see the end of Lincoln. But what did my dad just recommend? Oh, Expendables 2. He told me I'm going to laugh and enjoy the action. So we'll see. I don't know. It doesn't have Tom Cruise or Robert Downey Jr., so we'll see how I do. But um, So that's my peasy progress. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so afraid that that sweater was just going to languish and not go anywhere and be put aside, but really the at the same time, at the same time, at the same time, so three at the same times caused me to put it down, but for some reason I reread it and I was like, oh, this is crystal clear. It's almost like my brain was working on it for the three weeks I didn't touch it, and then it's like, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do. Bust this thing out. Let's go. Let's go. So that's the peasy. Um, what I have in my hands right here this was one of my, I wanted to get it done. So I wanted to finish at least one of the socks for my grandmother that I'm knitting with Patton's Croy Rag Shades in the blue rag colorway on US 1.5, 2.5, I wrote it down wrong and I've said it wrong every time, 2.5 millimeter needles, I believe. Um, it's a 2x2 two two rib sock and when I do my toe up 2x2 two two rib socks, which is basically the only thing you will ever see me do with a striping sock yarn, because I like to showcase the stripes and I like my less knitting for reading slash purse knitting. Um, so I usually do my 2x2 two two until about an inch shorter than I want the socks to be, and then I'll do 10 rows of 1x1 one one ribbing. And at this moment, I'm just, it looks like I have 6 rows of 1x1 one one ribbing, so I'm almost bound off on this first sock. So. There's that guy, um, his mate, because I like to do two at a time. I'm not sure if I'm any further along on this one than last time. I don't think I am. I think I was in the blue last time we looked at this together. But 
so I'll just, I won't put it on the bar here, I'll just show you. So there you go. So this one is at this point, this alternate one. So it started with orange, like the orange color. It's going to end, I think, with a light blue section after the orange. I'm going to need that much more to complete. But there you go. Framed by Maccabean as well. I don't know, the guys, I've been home for several hours running around with Roman, so I don't know why they need attention, but they're front and forward tonight. <laughs> so there you go. Those are my socks for my grandmother, like I said. Check done. It wasn't a goal or anything, but I'll just be happy to have something finished for her. Um, now, <coughs> excuse me, a couple more things. The gray sweater, the green tweed sweater I'm working on, I didn't touch it. And this, I'm okay with that because basically it's another top-down, lacy front, raglan design. Is it also? No, that one's by Jane Richmond. That's not by Heidi. But because I think this is my third Heidi Caramere pattern I've knit this year. Like, I'm on a tear for her. Um, so Grace is on larger size needles. But again, I'm at that point. I've broken off the sleeves. I have one sleeve done one sleep to go. <laughs> but it's just stocking it and the body going around, not round, but going back and forth, back and forth. So if I switch off between the two one week to the other, it'll mean it'll take me a little longer to knit the sweaters, but at the same time, I'm not getting bored and I'm using the colors, the green and the pink to kind of offset. Um, I don't even want to take this out. I'm just going to give you a little peek. There you go. The <laughs> know that it is still on the needles because I know that a lot of times I talk about a project and then it disappears never to be heard from hence forth hence I don't know never to be heard from again um the, I am still working on this a couple rows a week it'll be finished by October I promise maybe I will wear this at Ryan Beck next year hopefully fingers crossed no it'll be done whether or not I wear it is another thing it might not be for me um, but that is my pebble beanie. And lastly, in this lovely bag of mine, this is a petal loop bag. Um, so here's my Chadwick. Here's my Chadwick tube. And he has pipe cleaner in him, and I've been storing him folded in half. And now he, <laughs> he's got this lovely pun. So there's Chadwick. Oh my god, I have to tell you something. Do you know what I found out today? So when the year started, there were two pregnant people in my office. Well, Jeff is not pregnant, but his wife is. And then later in the year, we find out Jamie's pregnant. Oh, that's excellent news. Three pregnant people. Oh my God, we just found out today that Amy is also pregnant. So we are going to have four babies in my department of like 30 people. It's not a big department. Four babies born this year. And you know what? It seems like each person who has a baby, I love them more. <laughs> so I want to knit them nicer and nicer and nicer things, you know? And the thing with Amy, she's a knitter. She's totally going to get it and appreciate a beautiful lace something or other. Oh, man. I. But the odds that one of these babies is going to be a girl is good because I always want to knit for a girl because I don't have a girl and I knit a lot of girl things when I was pregnant. So... Anyway, so here's Chadwick. I'm not knitting for Chadwick's. I'm pretty sure I'm, this is going to be for Jamie because, um, yeah, labor of love and she'll get the humor of it, I think. So here's Chadwick. Here's his finished arms. And I don't know why, whenever I knit toys, they, they tend to curve. Do you see that? Something about the way I magic loop. I don't, I don't know. But they're both leaning that way towards the bottom. This one's worse than this one. I'll block them, they'll be fine. But those are his arms, so they hook on in the blue section. And I forgot the fact that I made his body segment shorter than the pattern called for. And so when I knit his arms, I knit the full 60, 60 rows that it calls for. So these are very, very long arms on this Chadwick. And I guess if I ripped back, I'm not ripping back. I'm not, nope, nope, I'm done, he's done, I just need to embroider his face, oh, and here are his antennas, so I was so happy, early, early, like, Thursday or Friday of last week, I finished him, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sew into pieces, and embroider his face, his antennas, 
And he's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to make him have the half closed smiley eyes. So it's going to be really cute. Maybe next week I'll have him finish. <laughs> There's my Chadwick. And that was knit with Knit Picks Sport Weight Felici in the color Dockside on US 1s. So he is nice and dense, and there is a rattle, cat toy rattle in there. So next week. <laughs> but when he was done, I cast on. Remember me talking about dinosaur thing kit? I think that was just last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I've been thinking about this for a while. So here's the dinosaur. That's what he looks like. He's a T-Rex, in case you didn't know. Um, this is what Rebecca Danger's T-Rex, what's his name? Terrence, the T-Rex, looks like. He doesn't look enough like, I'm hoping you could see him in the glare, enough like what I want here. So I'm going to do a little hybrid. I'm going to use his head and tail. And then I pulled out my Rebecca Danger Dinosaurs, uh, the big book of knitted monsters. And I'm going to use Harold the Houseplant Monster's feet. Because in my showing instructions, no. Because I like the three toes. That's just like this. And I'm going to use Dot the Dress Up Box Monster. I'm going to use her bottom half, the big hips, belly area. Um, maybe even the X, and then I'll switch and finish up that from here up. I'll follow the pattern. So, does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> so it's my Franken monster. I'm toying with making removable, the removable PJs. I guess that's the covers as good a picture as I'm going to play. Removable uh, red PJs or not. I think, at this point I'm thinking they're just going to be knit on because I don't want to put too much. I mean, it's not that I don't want to put too much into it, it's just how much is he really, Roland, really going to appreciate this. So here's what I have so far. <laughs> One foot done. So I am using some leftover sock yarn. Not sure what it is, but I know that it's a superwash nylon. I'm holding multiple needles from this bag is a mess. It's a uh, superwash 75-25 nylon. And so that's for the base of it. And then the scales are going to be this green. Does her guy have scales? He does not have scales. Oh my. Well, I think I can engineer scales. Or I could incorporate the stegosaurus pattern. Stegosaurus has scales. I already have the Brontosaurus. I have great plans of knitting all of them, but Dinosaurs think it has to be like the book. So there's his first foot. It's going to be pretty big, huh? That's the width of the toes. Those, those toes. So my Franken dinosaur will be going at it for a while, I'm sure. Because I tend to get annoyed with the fiddly and put it down in favor of socks or talking at and action movies. Um, I think that's all I have for you. I'm trying to think what this week's video, Roland video clip is going to be. I don't know, but I'll tell you a little bit about the week. He had a haircut, entirely too much haircut. And that's all I'm saying about that. Except that we're never having a haircut again. And we started swimming lessons again. So last time we went to the Y in the, I don't want to say public pool, but the unheated indoor pool did not go well. <laughs> For six weeks it did not go well. Uh, we actually didn't go to the last couple classes just because it was too much of a fight. He was one of those kids that didn't like the water. And so I talked to coworkers, and now we're going to the, um, I don't want to say remedial, but the place is much more invested. It's um, it's hooked to the, it's a gym that's associated with a hospital that has indoor pool and swimming lessons and very experienced instructors. And they have special classes just for kids that are afraid of the water. So 
we're going to those. <laughs> and he's had one. And we were there for 45 minutes. Like, you walk in the pool. They have um, wheelchair ramps so people can, you know, that's how you get in the pool is where a wheelchair would roll in. You can walk in. So it's very gradual and it's like taking a bath. And it's very warm. But um, we were there for 45 minutes. And after 30 minutes, he stopped crying. It's tough. <laughs> it's very tough. But we'll get there. We will get there because I was a fish. He's going to be a fish. But it's not. I'm, <clears throat> I'm being that parent, aren't I? Oh, God. And I'm confessing this to all of you. Please don't write and tell me not to push my agendas on my child. I know it's awful. Okay, here's my promise. If this class of swimming lessons doesn't work out, we're done. I won't make him go again until he's four. Alright, you heard it here. <laughs> Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's all I really have. He's been running around outside, super happy. Oh, we put together, this is what I'm going to show you. I remember, I remember. For his birthday, um, we got him, so back in September, my parents got him a push cart. Well, it's not a push cart. It's a car with a handle on the back, so he could use it as a walker, and then, and now he rides on it, like, uses his feet and pushes himself around the house. And we push him, and it's great. But that's like our indoor car. It's small. Um, Steve and I also got him a much larger car. Or it's a tricycle. It's a tricycle. But it has a foot bar that extends down. And it has a, a, a handle that comes off the back for a parent to push. So we started, we thought we'd put it together and use it for walks. Like I would push it until he got tired of walking and then he would ride. <laughs> There's also this element of steering and him steering while I'm pushing. It was, it was insane. So we took it out once for about half an hour. I don't know, for about 10, 15 minutes, not even that. And he ended up pushing it around. So here's a clip of him pushing it around. Bye -bye. The door was open. <laughs> bye bye, Roland. Have fun. Bye. Thank you. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> That's all I have for you this week. Um, if you are in the swap, please go over and talk about what you're thinking about buying. Share pictures. Let's really entice each other and sort of tease each other about what we're going to get. I'm really looking forward to spoiling my swappy. So I hope you are as well. And that's it. That's all I have. So, as I like to say, I will talk to you in about 10 days or so. And until then, enjoy what's going on in your knitting world. Take care.